Coming up, we'll hear about how a club on campus is providing new opportunities for students and get to know about one athlete's recovery from an injury. We'll also get to know more about a local event supporting a good cause and catch up on some sports. I'm Carly Kidd. And I'm Laura Kate Moore. Welcome to the Bulldog Weekly. Welcome back to the Bulldog Weekly. Today is Friday, April 28th. We've got a great show planned. Let's start with some local news. There was yet another school shooting this past week as Rose State College in Oklahoma City had a student open gunfire. The shooting left one person deceased as the suspect was taken into custody. The suspect and the victim were involved in a domestic situation. Rose State College is a public two-year institution with more than 13,000 students and 60 academic programs. The AP testing window begins on Monday. Be sure to know when your test is occurring if you are in an AP class and what the expectations are for that. The window will be open for two weeks with tests given in the morning and the afternoon. There is a mandatory senior meeting in the FHS Performing Arts Center on May 4th during advisory. This meeting is required for all students who wish to participate in the FPS graduation ceremony on May 18th. At the meeting, students will receive instructions for graduation and receive their 15 tickets for the event. Seniors, it's time to get your tickets for Project Graduation. This fun event will be held on May 18th from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. at the Hyper Building on the U of A campus. There will be a casino, prizes, and so much more. You can purchase a ticket for $20 by scanning the QR code located in the library or by bringing in cash or check to Ms. Harmon in the library. The process for obtaining a parking permit for the next school year will be as follows. Space is limited and seniors will get first priority. The class of 2024 will be permitted to register for a permit this week through 5 p.m. today. This is the only window of time for seniors to register. The class of 2025 will be permitted to register for a permit on May 1st at 8 a.m. through May 5th at 5 p.m. Students have many options when it comes to clubs here at school, but one club is helping our students grow as individuals. FHS TV reporter Ben Watson takes us behind the scenes of the AAMI club and what they can provide to FHS students. African American Male Initiative is a club to learn history, black excellence, and to connect personally with other students. FHS staff and coaches help with this club, but one is making a difference on and off the field. Really, I think it kind of goes back to just my reasons for wanting to be a teacher in the first place. Um, just try to, you know, give back to kids, be an impact, you know, be a resource for them, an advocate for them. You know, um, when I was in high school, I had some people that stepped up and did that for me, and I feel like it made a big difference. Uh, Coach Briss is an inspiration to me because, like, he, he kind of helps me a lot. Like, he's my coach, so he, he he's plays a big role in my life. Um, this is my first year playing, like, real varsity football. So like he helps and I see him around school a lot helping other people and I really look up to him. He's like kind of like a father figure to me. One thing about Coach Britt, he always going to keep it real with you. He going to let you know like what you need to work on, what things you need to do to improve yourself as a person and as a player on the field. AMI is a great opportunity for students and makes a huge impact. Um, everywhere that I've worked at, I've just tried to, you know, take that same mentality and try to get involved in something that's, you know, meaningful, has a purpose, but really centered around helping the kids, you know. And so uh, with the AA and my group, it's just a, you know, it's a group of kids that have some needs. And I think that, you know, me and the other guys that do it, um, you know, identify some of those needs and just try to help fill in the gaps. And so um, it's, it's definitely one of my favorite parts about working here. So in AA and my, like, we all, we all have this, like some problems and we just talk about it and go through it with each other. Like we're all like a big family in there. It's pretty special. And AMI, like his speeches, like they always speak truly about like everything that goes on in life and things that like people struggle with in their lifetime and everything like that. For FHS TV, I'm Ben Watson. 
Thanks, Ben. FHS Choir is hosting their spring concert, Unplugged. That concert will be tonight, Friday, April 28th at 7 p.m. in the FHS PAC and admission is free. The Senior Scholarship and Honors Night will be held on May 16th at 6.30 p.m. in the FHS PAC. This event recognizes graduating seniors who have been named as National Merit Finalists, CTE Completers, and who have earned scholarships and academic honor courts. Seniors are to wear their gown and any previously awarded regalia to the event. Congratulations to the FHS Wind Ensemble for their outstanding performance in the State Concert Assessment in Cabot. The group received a superior rating from all judges, which is the highest rating possible. Washington Regional Hospital is here today during advisory looking to hire FHS students. You must be 18 and the meeting will be held in the FHS Lecture Hall. They are seeking motivated students for positions including clerical, text, sterile processing, and attendance. Students should bring copies of their resume. Many local businesses are trying to help the community in a number of ways. Reporter Eleanor Eichmann tells us more about one option that is trying to keep our community safe. Today we spoke to small businesses in NWA on how they're making an impact in partnering with the Children's Safety Center nonprofit and their Passport to Prevention Challenge in the month of April. Passport to Prevention is an event that we're doing with the Children's Safety Center of Washington County. Um, it's basically an event that we're doing with the local businesses in Fayetteville. Um, you participate in a, whatever a promotion that they're doing for the Children's Safety Center and you also um, get a punch on your passport. So what that does is it enters you into a raffle for um, like I think it's valued over about a thousand dollars and you win something from each of the local boutiques that are participating in the event. And it's just a really um, simple way to get involved with the Children's Safety Center. Yeah. You know, April is um, Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month. And so that's one of the reasons that this passport is happening this month. And it just is such a great uh, promotion for them. It's been a really positive impact for our business um, in a lot of different ways. We've had people come in and ask about this. We actually have a Children's Safety Center bowl that we'll put, we have put together. Um, it's very blue because blue is the color for Child Abuse Prevention Awareness Month. Um, and so we've had a lot of guests that have come in and asked, you know, well, what is this and how does this happen? How does it work? And I think it's helped to really raise awareness. But I think from an association standpoint, it's really um, meaningful for us to be able to help the community and help um, these types of great organizations that are impacting the community in a positive way. Make sure to pick up a passport at one of these local businesses. And for more information, go to www.childsafetycenter.org. For FHS TV, I'm Eleanor Eichmann. Thanks, Eleanor. After the break, we'll hear about one athlete's recovery process. We'll also hear from Arden Bramlett with the Bulldog Sports Report. We'll see you in 30. FHS TV, this is Thomas Chambers. From the Bulldog Weekly, I'm Sean Newman. Back to your desk. Welcome back to the Bulldog Sports Report. Our spring sports are now winding down while they are looking forward to conference and state tournaments. All of those tournaments begin in early May, so be sure to check with us for updates. Also, be sure to check out the home soccer games tonight against Rogers Heritage. Both games will be streamed on the Fayetteville Sports Network, and the first game starts at 5.30. Be sure to get out there and support our dogs. That's all for sports. I'm Arden Bramlett. Back to the desk. Injury is a brutal part of sports that affects many students here at FHS. FHS TV's Natalie Harris gives us an in-depth look at one soccer player's ability to overcome her ailment. Last soccer season, Ashley Kramer tore her ACL and has become an inspiration to her teammates by recovering from her injury and is back playing for her junior season. I tore my ACL at, pra at soccer practice, non-contact. My knee went out the wrong direction and popped. My recovery process was nine months of active working to get not only um, full range of motion on my knee, like complete bend and complete straightening of my knee, but also to strengthen the muscles around it. 
during the surgery, my quad got a lot smaller, so I also had to build back up all the muscle in my knee. I think Ashley's um, ACL journey has been inspirational because she's been so motivated to be able to get back on the field, and she's done everything she possibly can to get there as soon as she can. About six months into my um, nine months, I had to get a second surgery because I had scar tissue that built up in my knee. But it was an odd situation because normally you get scar tissue when uh, you don't have the full range of motion, but I had full range of motion. So that was hard mentally and physically to stop the process and then get right back into it. But I ended up getting back into soccer season. Um, I think it's an inspiration because I saw like her passion and her love for the sport and then that kind of taken away how she um, couldn't get to play it anymore, but then um, use that as a way to just like be built back up. Uh, currently, I feel like I was a better player before, but I'm still recovering um, and getting back into it, just getting used to the knee brace and everything, but I know that I will get back up to there eventually. For FHS TV, I'm Natalie Harris. Back to the desk. Thanks, Natalie. That's all we've got for this edition of the Bulldog Weekly. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at FHSTV Fable High for all new shows and live events. And follow us on our Instagram at FHS Bulldog TV to stay up to date with all the news around the school and in the community. I'm Laura Kate Moore. And I'm Carly Kidd. We'll see you next time.